Now we're going to look at the idea of mystery languages. In mystery languages, we have one syntax but with multiple different semantics or behaviors. So when you run a program, you don't get one answer but many. There are typically three, but there might be more or fewer. Let's see this through an example. Here is the simplest of mystery languages called strings. We have to tell Racket we want to write programs in the string mystery language, which we do this way. Now, let's start writing some programs. Here's a very simple program. When we run it, which we can do by clicking on run or by typing a key binding, it runs and produces three results. In this case, all the results are the same. Now here's another program. Again we run it and again see three results. Once again, all three are the same. The documentation tells us the strings language provides a concatenation operation, so let's try that. Oh, something happened. The three don't produce the same result. It looks like the third output is different. In fact, it looks like concatenation has inserted a space for us. Let's try to confirm this. Nice. That seems to confirm our hypothesis. Come to think of it, this looks like it could be a useful operator in its own right. At this point, we've told apart the third from the first two, but we haven't yet told apart those two. We notice that the documentation also provides us with the string equality comparison. Unsurprisingly, those two strings are the same. Now, in what reasonable way could we disagree about string equality? Well, think about capitalization. As a computer scientist, you've probably forgotten that there could be any dispute about this at all, but for many lay people, case isn't significant. Let's try that. And sure enough, that distinguishes the first and second languages. We should do a few more checks to make sure, but you get the idea. What you'll find from running these is that it's hard to keep track of all this output. It's literally three times as much output as usual, and that can be overwhelming enough. So, once we've identified a difference, we should wrap it up in a test block that describes what we've come to expect. For instance, this test block summarizes our first insight. Notice that when we run it, Racket suppresses the output. It'll only report something if there's a test failure. For instance, if we'd instead written, then it produces an error. In other words, silence is golden. Let's fix that first test confirm that it still works, and then write one that captures our second bit of knowledge. When we run it, we see that this test passes too. With this pair of tests, we can now tell all three apart. Observe that these are really three different languages. We call them variants to indicate that they are variations in the behavior of the string language. The first has traditional concatenation and case-sensitive comparison. The second has traditional concatenation and case-insensitive comparison. And the third is case-sensitive, but has this more sentence-friendly concatenation operation. This concludes our first mystery language experience. This one was pretty straightforward, but they get much more interesting.